So in this video there might be some background noise because I live in a house full of crazy. And whenever I start recording, everyone in the house goes, yes, we're going to be quiet. And then this. So sorry about the audio issues. You've been warned. Welcome back to the War Boss Fitch channel. And today we are going to be talking about the ghostly undead. And before we get into it, today our 3D creators are going to be, once again, Highland Miniatures and Heroes Infinite. They both got some undead models that can be switched over with a cool paint job to look ghostly. And Heroes Infinite has some really cool looking stuff. So let's go ahead and get into the ghostly undead. And today I'm going to do something different for the special rules because I noticed that most of you don't watch it as long as it's just me reciting the special rules. So I'm just going to go over some of the stuff that makes them great once you figure out the way that they stack saves on this. So first, the rules that everybody gets in the army, which is undead. If you've watched these videos, you know what undead does. If you fail morale test, it counts as passed, but then you have to roll one dice for everybody in the unit, and on a one to three, they take a wound. Which means that, yes, your army could evaporate as you fail morale tests, but you are never going to be shaken. So that means all the way until that unit is dead to the man, you are going to be able to contest objectives. Now on to what I think make the ghostly undead great. And believe it or not, these might be the tankiest army in Age of Fantasy. Everybody starts out with a defense of six. Doesn't sound great, but let's look at some things that you could stack on it. Ethereal, everyone in the army has Ethereal. It counts as having Stealth and Strider, which means you're harder to shoot over nine inches away. And Strider means you ignore difficult terrain because, let's face it, you're a ghost. You don't care. And then the big part is when taking a wound, roll one die, and on a six plus, it is ignored. So that is a second save. Let's go ahead and look at Spell Eater. When taking a wound, roll one die, and on a six it is ignored. If the wound is from a spell, then it is ignored on a two plus instead. So this is a third save. Most of the time of a six, but if your enemy's throwing around a whole lot of spells, you save it on a two. And then there is the Eternal Haunt. This model and its unit get regeneration. This is a character ability that gives you a fourth save. So in essence, what that gives you, if you stack all these on the same unit, that gives you four saves. A six, 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 and then a five. So I had someone who's better than me at statistics on my Discord channel run the numbers, and it turns out that that is a 62% chance to save. You're pretty much looking at a three-up save on all your models if you've stacked all these saves, and because the characters can get all these kind of different abilities, some of the squads come with that already on them, you're going to be tanky as hell. So moving on to the spells, once again, I'm not going to go over the offensive spells because you, know, you can look at them, they do what they say on the tin. What we are going to look at is Rise Again. This is another way to get more tankiness in your army. Two friendly units within 18 get regeneration. And Grief, two friendly units within 12 get plus two to hit next time they charge. Now on your regular ghost units, it's kind of a waste, but some of your specialty units, this puts them right to a two plus to hit with some of their weapons, which are great. So what it's going to do is, along with being tanky, you can throw grief out there on some of your more specialized units and you become a very offensive focused unit. So that's going to be what I go over here and then we'll go more into the other rules as we get into the units. So let's go ahead and take a look at some units. We're going to start with a grim leader, 45 points, quality 4, defensive 6, comes with a hand weapon for 3 attacks with a reap. They have Ethereal, Furious, Hero, Toughness 3, and Undead. Now, as far as unit upgrades go, we can get Executioner, which is Grim Reaper. The model and its unit get Reap. Reap is a rule that means whenever the enemy rolls a 1, it counts as causing 2 wounds. Capture Souls for Jailer. Once per this unit's activation before attacking, pick 1 enemy unit within 12, which gets minus 2 to its next morale test. Warden for Eternal Haunt. This model and its unit gets Regeneration. Soul Guardian gives you Caster 2, which gives you access to those delicious, delicious spells. Stolen Time, if you choose Knight, this model and its unit get plus one to defense rolls. And Master Soul Guardian gives it Caster 3. Now, for what I think is going to be the best in this section here, Eternal Haunt is going to be probably the best, giving the whole unit regeneration. That's going to add on an additional layer of those saves, making it tankier in general. Stolen Time, I think, giving it plus one defense rolls. I, I don't think this one is worth it because the tankiness of the army comes from stacking the saves, not making the first one better. What this would do is just give you a five plus defense to start with. The Eternal Haunt would give you a five plus at the end of the roll. Stolen Time could be affected by AP. Eternal Haunt can be affected by poison or, poison or rending. So if you know you're going to be fighting something with a lot of rending, 
Eternal Haunt might not be worth it, but against 90% of the field, it will be. So the best choices here are going to be either Eternal Haunt, Caster 2, or Caster 3. You can replace the hand weapon with a dual hand weapon, a halberd, a great weapon, or a spear. This is all the weapons that they have access to all come with reap because you are essentially one of the grim reapers you can give heavy armor for defense plus one and a chain spirit companion for a warning cry again the defense is kind of a trap but it's only five points not terrible to throw on there if you've got the five extra points left over then you can upgrade this unit with a ghost steed a monarch throne or a great steed ghost steed i would say just use that if case you're going to put him with a cav unit Monarch Throne does give Fear, an extra 3 toughness making them toughness 6, 2 regular attacks and defense plus 1, and a great steed is fast flying, you get 1 lance attack with the horn, 2 impact, plus 3 toughness and defense of 1. So Ghost Steed and Great Steed are going to be if you want to put them into a cav unit, Monarch Throne would be if you want to run them on foot or floating with the rest of the ghosts, just to give them some tankiness and a little bit more punching power with the 2 attacks from the Herald. Our next unit is the Champion. 35 points, quality 5, defense of 6, 3 attacks with a hand weapon. This character does not start with Reap. Ethereal, Hero, Toughness 3, and Undead. You can get most of the same upgrades except for Overseer, which is Bleak Return. This model and its unit get Ambush, which is always good to drop something behind the enemy lines. You can replace the hand weapon with a dual hand weapon, a great weapon, a halberd, or a spear. And you can give this unit a heavy armor for defense plus 1. So again here, you're going to want to look for Warden and the Casters. This is just going to give you access to it at, you know, 10 points cheaper. So for that 10 points of difference, you end up getting Reap and plus one quality on the unit if you take a Grim Leader over a Champion. But if you're a little bit short on points, you can make up that 10 points just by using a Champion. The next unit is the Ancient Wraith. 80 points, quality 3, defensive 6. Comes with a great weapon for 3 attacks, AP 2 with Reap, Ambush, Ethereal, Hero, Toughness 3, and Undead. The only option this character comes with is Spell Eater, so this will give this character an extra layer of protection. It doesn't have any unit upgrades to help out any unit that it's with. So this is going to be a character that's pretty much going to be running around on his own. Give them Spell Eater, ambushing them behind something, and with a great weapon they're going to be able to do some damage. Next unit we have is the Ancient Banshee, 95 points, quality 3, defensive 3. It has a Claw for 3 attacks, and Howl for 4 attacks, AP 1 at 12 inches. You can upgrade it with Spell Eater, and it has Ambush, Chilling, Ethereal, Hero, Toughness 3, and Undead. Now I haven't told you about Chilling yet. Chilling means that the enemies get minus 1 to hit in melee whenever they're attacking this unit. It just gives another layer of defense to the units that have Chilling. So this is going to be a character that's based primarily on the shooting with the Howl. 4 attacks at AP 1 at 12 inches is not too bad in Age of Fantasy. And she becomes a pretty good anchor point with a Banshee unit, which we will get to in a minute. Now we're going to start off with our basic unit, which is the Ghost Horde. 95 points for 10 of them, quality 5, defense of 6, ethereal, and undead. They each have one attack with their hand weapons. You can replace all the hand weapons with a halberd for rending or a spear for counter. There's no option for dual hand weapons, which I normally default to. But keeping them cheap at 95 points with just the basic weapons seems to be a good choice with them. You can upgrade them with heavy armor to give them defense plus one, which you could do. I prefer to keep them cheap with a defense of six because the heavy armor defense of plus one for 20 points, I don't think that's going to be worth it because on the defense of six, you ignore all the AP of your enemy because your save can't get any better than a six. And just your layered saves on top of it are what's going to be what saves these guys not extra heavy armor so for this one here it's not really worth building a squad to put a character in just keep him cheap keep him simple he's going to be what you're going to use to contest objectives or for a little bit of a combat push if and when you need it the next unit is the mourner banshees five of them for 85 points quality four defense of six they have chilling ethereal spell eater and undead so they already come equipped with one of those layered saves and with chilling they are going to be minus one to hit they all come equipped with morning blades which are one attack a piece with poison and you can upgrade all of them to shriek for one shot at ap1 at 12 inches so these banshees turn into a ranged unit whenever you pop on the shriek quality four one shot at ap1 is not too shabby but what else you could do is you could take these and use these instead of your ghosts because they do have that built-in spell eater which means they're going to have an extra layer of save and chilling, which means that whenever they do get into combat, they're going to be minus one to hit. Five of them come out 10 points cheaper than 10 ghosts. So if you're going to look for a cheaper, heavier hitting combat unit, 
the mortar banshees are where you're going to want to start. So let's build a unit with these. Start out with 10, then we put in a grim leader. We throw on Eternal Haunt, and what that's going to do is that is the full gambit of the saves. You have the 6 plus save, you get the Ethereal for another layer of a 6, and then with the Mortar Banshees, they have a Spell Eater for another layer of a 6, and with the Eternal Haunt, that gives them all regeneration for the 5 plus save at the end. So that makes them real tanky. And with Poison on the Mortar Banshees, that means that they are going to ignore the regeneration of the enemy, and whenever they roll a 6 to save, they have to re-roll it. So if you want to tool up some Mortar Banshees, that's how you could do it. Next unit is the Ghost Reapers. Five of them for 85 points, quality 4, defense of 5, ethereal and undead. They come with scythes for one attack at AP1 with Reap. You can replace one of the scythes with a Death Bell for one attack, AP2, and Deadly 3. So this one is rather basic looking, but with quality 4 and defense of 5, let's see what we can do here. We're going to combine the unit. We're going to put in a Grim Leader. So they all already have Reap, so Grim Reaper, you're not going to need that. You could do Eternal Haunt for the regeneration. This gives them a little bit more tankiness. And then for weapon, the Grim Leader does not have access to a Scythe, but he does have access to a great weapon. So there you go. Here you have 10 attacks AP1 with Reap and 3 attacks AP2 with Reap. Again, everyone has Ethereal and Regeneration from the Eternal Haunt, which means they're pretty good and tanky. Next unit is the Scythe Ghost. Five of them for 85 points, quality 5, defense of 6, chilling, ethereal, and undead. They come with dual scythe claws for two attacks with rending. And this one, you can upgrade all of them with spell eaters. So let's just go ahead and do that. So with rending, they're going to remove all the regeneration off of the enemy. Let's go ahead and build a unit here. Again, scythe ghosts, doublet, grim leader, eternal haunt. And this is, again, another one of those extremely tanky units with a 6 plus save, 6 plus ethereal save, 6 plus from the spell eater from the squad, and a 5 plus from the regeneration for the eternal haunt. You can throw on a halberd to make all the attacks rending, and for 280 points, you've got a pretty good tanky line holding unit. And for 280 points, you have a unit that can A, hold the line because of how tanky it is, and B, it could do a whole lot of damage because this is going to be 20 attacks with rending coming out of this squad. The next unit is the Ghost Revenants, 100 points, quality 4, defense of 5, ethereal, furious, and undead. One attack apiece with AP3, and there's no upgrades to this unit. So even though they start off with defense of 5, this is going to be one of your least tanky units in the army, because they only have a 5+, plus and then a 6+, plus. but then you can, just like everything else, take another character, hook them on there with the Eternal Haunt, which gives them a 6+, plus, 6+, plus, 5+. Plus. The AP3 weapons are nice, and with this squad, you're only looking at 275. Give the character a great weapon, you're looking at 285. 13 attacks, hitting on a 4. 10 of those AP3, 3 of those AP2. Again, a pretty good offensive squad. I would love if you could give them Spell Eater on top of that, but it's not an option. The next unit of Wraiths, 5 of them for 120 points, quality 3, defense of 6. They come with Ambush, Ethereal, and Undead. They all have great weapons for one attack at AP2 with a Reap, and they do have access to the Spell Eater, so whenever you see this, just go ahead and put that right on the unit. We're starting off at 135, we can combine the unit for 270, and this is going to be a pretty big Sledgehammer type unit. So let's go ahead and put a Grim Leader in here, and you can either do Eternal Haunt, or this might be a spot to start putting some casters in there, because this one's going to be up on the front line. Time to start slinging some spells. Using Rise again, you can give this squad regeneration. You can throw Grief on here to make sure that they hit on a 2, even against things that have minus 1 to hit. The next unit is Craven Shooters. 5 of them for 90 points. The next unit is Craven Shooters. 5 of them for 90 points. Quality 5, Defense of 6, Ethereal, and Undead. They come equipped with Hand Weapons for 1 attack and Soul Crossbows for 1 shot at 18 with Rending and Indirect. The only upgrade, you can give them a Sergeant, Musician, or a Banner. This is going to be a cool unit to put on the board to sit them behind a piece of terrain because their crossbows being indirect means that you could just shoot at anybody on the board that's 18 inches away from you. That'll be good to cover an objective or to push forward to stay behind your front line of troops and just pepper the enemy with crossbow bolts that go right through everything. The next unit is Banshees, 160 points, quality 3, defensive 6, chilling, ethereal, and undead. They have claws for one attack apiece, and they have Howls for two attacks AP1 at 12 inches, and you can upgrade them all with Spell Eater. So these are going to be a very offensive shooting unit. Combine it for 320 points, and then you have the option to put in an Ancient Banshee. 
to add another four shots on top of it and you can give them all spell eater just to be tanky it's 455 points but 24 shots hitting on the three at ap1 is this is going to be one of the better shooting units that i have seen in age of fantasy they're going to be able to do some work they don't even need the ancient banshee 320 points for 20 shots at ap1 is still going to be great next unit is ghost swarms three of them for 130 points quality four defense of six three attacks apiece with their swarm attacks ethereal toughness three and undead the unit has no upgrades now like the other swarms we've seen these are not going to be used offensively these are going to be little griblies that are going to be running around to take objectives from the enemy and just be general pains in the butts their point cost is a little bit high for swarm unit because they do have quality four so if you really think that you need it you could put them into combat and probably do some damage or at least do some hits with nine attacks they're going to average four or five hits if the enemy has crap armor these are going to do some work on the attack back, their defense is 6 with Ethereal, so that means that they're going to save on a 6 and then a 6. And with Undead, the enemy is going to have to kill all of them to take them off the board. Next unit is the Glaive Stalkers. 95 points, quality 5, defense of 6. They come equipped with Glaives for 1 attack at AP1 and Rending. Ethereal, Fast, Impact, 1, and Undead. You can give them a Sergeant Musician or a Banner. They don't have any of the inbuilt tankiness that some of the other units do, but you can combine them for 10 of them for 190 points. They're hitting out of 5, so for these to put a character in there, you're going to want to do a Grim Leader and put him either on a Ghost Steed or a Great Steed, just to keep up with the unit with the fast. Let's go ahead and do a Ghost Steed just to make them cheap. Halberd to give them all rending. And again, Eternal Haunt to make them tanky. Or a Caster to make them tanky. Or possibly give them the Grief, that means they're going to be hitting out of 3. So that would be the offensive way to use them. The, the really another way to use them would be to make them the little, little cheeky objective grabbers keep them cheap at 95 points to be able to run around and grab objectives from the enemy the next unit is grave knights 110 points quality four defensive six they come equipped with heavy hand weapons for one attack at ap1 ethereal fast impact one and undead you can give them heavy armor to go to defensive five and you can give them tormentor which gives them ambush and while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the next unit, too, of Hexed Knights. Quality 4, defensive 6, ethereal fast, flying, spectral touch, and undead. One attack with a great weapon at AP2 and reap. And these can get access to heavy armor. So with the Hexed Knights, you can fly them through stuff, through walls, over mountains. It doesn't matter. With the Dread Knights, you can pretty much do the same thing, except for stuff that's impassable. Just because the ethereal gives you strider, which means you ignore difficult terrain. So they're always going to be going as fast as they can. Dread Knights... With Ambush, means they're going to be able to pop up anywhere. And Hex Knights, the Hex Knights with Flying and Spectral Touch. Spectral Touch means that whenever you fly over an enemy unit, the enemy takes one hit on a six. And with Flying, you can go over top of stuff. So whenever you charge something, you're going to do damage to it. And then the next turn, if you're still in combat with it, with Flying, you can just pop over the top and charge from the other direction. Everybody gets to roll a dice in the unit, and for every six, it's an extra hit. Kind of a cool rule saying that you move through the enemy and they go Whoa, like a Ghostbusters moment. So both of these units, we're going to take a Grim Leader. Let's start with the Dread Knights. Combine it. Put the Grim Leader in there. You got the Eternal Haunt to give them regeneration. Again, I'm going to say it every time because just that added layer of defense to them is great. Or you can go Caster to push these to hitting on a 2. And it's going to be the same thing if you put them in the Hex Knights. Putting Grief on this unit, making them hit on a 2 with AP2 and Reap. These are going to be your offensive cavalry of the army. So I would say take the Hex Knights for the damage potential because they do have an extra AP and they have reach with the Spectral Touch being a cool little gimmicky thing for them. Or if you want to ambush stuff, you could use the Dread Knights, having them pop up anywhere. Or with the Dread Knights, you can keep them cheap with ambush and fast to be able to pop up and take objectives in the rear of the enemy lines. Now we're moving on to vehicles. We're going to start off with the Funeral Coach. 185 points, quality 4, defense of 4, ethereal, fast, fear of 1, impact 4, regeneration built in, toughness 6, and undead. Two attacks with its crew at AP2 with reap, and two attacks with hooves. And the unit has no upgrades. So this one starts off pretty tanky with a 4 plus, 6 plus, 5 plus with the regeneration. Fast Fear of 1, which means it counts as doing plus 1 wound whenever you do combat resolution. Impact 4, with Ethereal and Fast, it's going to be the one that does the charging, adding a little bit more offensive output to it. This is going to be a good shock unit for your army. And then our last unit is the Ghost Chariot, 260 points, quality 4, defensive 4, 
comes with Caster 2, Chilling, which means it's minus 1 to hit, Ethereal, which gives it Stealth and Strider and a 6 plus save, Fast, Impact 4, comes with Spell Eater for an additional layer of defense, Toughness 6, and Undead. Two attacks with Lance from its crew attacks, two attacks with its hooves. It has a shooting attack for six shots at 12 inches at AP1. It comes with Caster 2, so it has access to all of the spells here. So either it should be giving regeneration to itself with Rise Again and one other friendly unit, or it could be moving along with your offensive line and pushing Grief onto two friendly units, giving them all plus two to hit. So that's going to be the end of the Ghostly Undead army list. Let's go ahead and see what I am going to put on the board today. So this is the list we come up with here. We're going to start off with two squads of Ghost Hordes for 95 points. These are just going to be there as kind of as a filler unit, a little bit of combat potential if I need it, and just sticking around to take objectives. The next unit is the Grim Leader and Scythed Ghosts. Scythed Ghosts have been given Spell Eater for the added layer of defense, and the Grim Leader has been given Grim Reaper to give everyone in the squad reap on their weapons. So it's going to have three out of the four saves built into it. It doesn't have regeneration. We're going to look for regeneration elsewhere with the spellcasters in the unit. Speaking of spellcasters, we have a Grim Leader and Wraiths. Coming with Caster 3, it's going to be the one that's going to be throwing out Rise Again and Grief whenever it can. Hooked onto the Wraiths with one attack, AP2 with Reap. They already have Spell Eater built in, so again, we have three out of the four saves built in, looking for the regeneration from the caster. They're going to be going after the larger enemy units. Next unit, we have an Ancient Banshee hooked onto some regular Banshees. Everybody has Spell Eater. Everyone's going to be shooting 24 shots at AP1 at 12 inches. These are going to be kind of the quick reaction force to put down whatever it needs to get put down. Then we have a Grim Leader with the Hex at Knights. Grim Leader has the Eternal Haunt, which gives him and the squad regeneration. Dual hand weapons for Reap. And then this guy's on a Great Steed, which gives fast flying, one attack with the lands, impact two, toughness three, and defense of one. Hooked onto the Hexed Knights, which I didn't take any upgrade to them, but because they are fast and flying and ethereal, they're gonna be able to they're gonna be able to engage people from directions that no one thought was possible. And then at the end, I threw in a Ghost Chariot. One, because I have the model from Heroes Infinite, and it looks amazing. So, of course, I had to put it in the list. And then it also is going to be running around using its shooting weapon, six shots at AP1 at 12 inches to put out some fires and throw out some spells with the caster. So that's what we're going to see on the board when we go to the battle report. And I've also split up the battle report in the unit overview this week. So if you want to look at the battle report going through this, click this little icon here up in the corner. And that will take you over to the battle report where you're going to see the ghostly undead take on the Havoc Warriors for this week's battle report. So that'll do it for here. Remember to like and subscribe for more OPR goodness. That'll be enough babbling for me. I'll see you guys out in the garage to play a game. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.